Hello, my beautiful friends. I am Laurel Bleeden Lafay with Illuminating Souls, welcoming you to this episode of Sleepy Bedtime Blessings, a podcast designed to help you rest, relax, and fall asleep, all while deepening in your connection with your beautiful team of angels who love you so. I am an angelic practitioner, a spiritual teacher, and an encourager of souls, and I am also an avid listener of sleep podcasts. So let me begin first by sharing with you about the work I do in the world. So I have the best job ever. I get to encourage you. I get to help you remember that you are loved. I get to support you on your life's path. And my offerings include one-on-one angel sessions, which take place over the phone. They are one-hour sessions. And we have heartfelt conversation and I channel messages for you from the angels. I also offer soul mentoring, which is a longer form of support. And then I offer a variety of classes designed to inspire your spirit. I have a new class that comes out about every six weeks or so. I'm never quite sure what it's going to be ahead of time. I usually get the download about a week or two before we begin. So the best way to keep posted with what it is that I do is to visit me on my website, illuminatingsouls.com. And there are two different places you can sign up for my mailing list. At the top of the page, you can sign up just for my regular list and you'll receive all of my announcements. And further down the page, you can sign up for the daily inspiration email, and you'll receive an inspiring email from me every weekday. I also post regularly to Facebook and YouTube. So lots of ways that we can connect. But for now, the angels and I are here to help you come in to a sweet, soothing, sacred space where you can receive waves of divine love, where we can keep you company for the next hour or so. And so yes, each episode runs about an hour. Because this is a sleep podcast, it's not expected that you pay attention the whole time. But as a listener of sleep podcasts, my preference is to listen to episodes that run about an hour because then I don't feel pressured to fall asleep. So my episodes run about an hour as well. Usually the first 15 to 20 minutes, I just share some spiritual insights with you and I bring forward the angels for you. And then the next part of the episode, I tell you stories. I might read to you something in the public domain I might share with you stories from my own life. We might flip through the pages of an old TV guide. So I try to keep you amused and I try to do that for myself as well. So my sweet friends, I am honored and grateful to be here with you right now. As I record this, there is a lot happening in the world. And I think most of us are feeling rather tender as a result. And so if you are feeling this, I just want you to know you're not alone. God bless our sweethearts. We feel so deeply. I know that I am one who feels life through my heart. I remember my father used to say to me that he worried about me because I felt so deeply. I've always been highly emotional. I've been able to regulate it, but I've always had a pretty wide octave of emotional experiences in life. 
And my dad used to worry about me because of it. And I now get to say to him in heaven, you know, dad, I lived long enough for my emotional sensitivity to become one of my superpowers because it provides me the opportunity to feel into the depths of love to connect with the angels and to be present with you. So I'm just sending you a virtual energetic hug and we can hang out together for a while and keep each other company in this weird time that we're in. So I invite you to get comfortable in whatever way you can, whatever way is available to you. Take some nice deep breaths in and out, just allowing your body to come to center. My favorite way to listen to sleep podcasts, as I've shared with you before, is to curl up in bed. I sleep with lots of pillows and blankets. I usually go to sleep a little while before my husband does. I seem to need more sleep than he does, so... I crawl in bed first and I just bought some new pillows that are lovely. So bed is feeling extra snuggly right now. And then I pick a sleep podcast to listen to. And I do listen to this one. So I'm fortunate in that my own sleep podcast works for me. And as I record this, it is early morning and it is still dark out. So there is a sweet stillness present right now that I want to share with you. So just if you will breathe, I know you're breathing because you're here, but just maybe take an intentional breath or two, allowing your lungs to inflate. And then just releasing, releasing whatever needs to be released. And as you do this, I am going to invite the angels in to be with us. They are already here, but I love sharing the ritual with you. So as we take the next breath, I invite you to join me as we call ourselves forward into the heart of God and beautiful angels on high I invite you to join us here and I ask that you make your presence known in ways that are deeply loving and compassionate and kind and uplifting angels we need you now please remind us that we are in a universe filled with love and support. Angels, I ask that you bring waves of healing to each of our beloveds listening to this message and rippling this love out everywhere it is needed. And dear ones, just take a breath in and out. The angels invite you to bring your prayers and intentions into your heart and share them with God and the angels and they will amplify your prayers for you. And then with your permission, the angels will bring their energy more closely to you. And imagine, if you will, that the angels are filling the space that you are in with a beautiful, soft, pink light. And this light, it is filled with love for you. It is filled with love that has been calibrated just for you. That the angels know what is in your heart. They know your dreams. They know your worries. They know everything that you are. And so they bring you love that has been calibrated just for you. And as this love fills the space you are in, they invite you to receive. 
Allow the love to flow to you now. So as we are in this light field together, I want to share with you a couple of strategies, techniques that can be helpful navigating times of deep stress. The first is just a, a really easy, mundane one. But when we're under a lot of stress, our bodies need more hydration. Okay, so this is not angelic advice. This is, this is um, Auntie Laurel advice. Make sure you're drinking plenty of water because when we are stressed, we need more hydration. So I always try to remember during these times to drink more water and I find that it helps. So total mundane thing. And you may not want to drink a lot of water before you go to bed because that may interrupt your sleep. So try to increase your water consumption earlier in the day if you can. And then I do have an angelic suggestion for you. So if you will imagine with me and, and, and come into the concept that we are multidimensional beings, I know that's just a really razzle dazzle kind of phrase, but it means that our consciousness is expansive and our consciousness travels and experiences many things known and unknown, right? There's parts of our consciousness that we are aware of and there are parts that we are not. So the way the angels have explained this to me is when there is great upheaval in the world or within a family, that a part of us, the greater expanse of all that we are, our greater soul, our higher self, that often we travel to be of loving service, astrally. So our energy, if you will, our light body travels to be of service. And that's a beautiful thing. And it also on the earth plane can leave us feeling physically fatigued, emotionally overwhelmed. So here's the technique. We call it going off duty. It sounds so simple, right? And it is. So it's based on the premise that we live in a world of abundance, a universe of abundance. And rarely are we ever the only source that light can flow through. So if you're feeling tired and overwhelmed, to pull your energy back and ask the angels to take you off duty. And what that means is that your light body, your energy body, your consciousness is going to be placed kind of off duty. You're off the roster for 24 or 48 hours. You just say to the angels, hey angels, I need to go off duty for a day or two. Just send all the light requests somewhere else. And it will be tended to. And usually when I ask to go off duty, I imagine, you know the old retro hotel signs that it would say, no vacancy? in neon letters, I kind of see this sign that says off duty, like the off duty taxi cab signs they used to have, or maybe they still have them. I don't know. But at times of tremendous upheaval, like we are in now, I find it helpful to ask to go off duty for a day or two to recenter and regroup. And I find that it gives me a vibrational buffer from whatever is transpiring because I'm not sending out tendrils of energy to be of service 
I, it, this is not a conscious thing. I'm not consciously sitting in my office chair at work, sending tendrils of light everywhere. This is subliminal. But it's this opportunity to recall our energy to center, knowing that there's an abundance of support between angelic beings and light beings and earthly beings for you to take 24 or 48 hours of recalling your energy so that you can rest and find balance is really helpful. So this is a technique I have used throughout the years. I almost always forget about it until I tell it to someone. And so I'm reminding myself I have permission to go off duty just as I am reminding you. And you have permission to tend to your beingness, body, mind, and soul. So do what you can right now to be kind to yourself. And it might be really simple things like taking a shower, a bath at night before you go to sleep to wash the day off of you and do a reset so that you can crawl in bed with the energy cleared from you. I find showers and baths are not only good for my physical body, they are really good for my energetic body. And... Take good care of your instrument, your beingness, because we are under a tremendous amount of stress right now. It's so interesting. I, I see myself observing myself and I see all the ways that this is showing up for me. And I have a shorter fuse than normal. It doesn't mean I'm raging at people. I just... I'm more easily overwhelmed by really benign things. I think in the world of eating, I think some people either eat when they're stressed or they can't eat when they're stressed. I think few people are just in the middle. I definitely am in the eating more group. And I find that I am seeking out foods I normally don't eat. And then I get them and I'm not comforted by them, which is discomforting. <laughs> this just happened to me two days ago. I was, I was driving around doing some errands and I thought I must have Chinese food. And listen, I love Chinese food, but I, it's not one of the foods I eat frequently. It's not, it's not my comfort food. And, um, and, and, you know, there's good Chinese food and not good Chinese food, like any cuisine, I suppose. And um, I went to one of those restaurants that has the steam table, you know, where they give you a, a big container and you choose whether or not you want rice or chow mein. And then you want your, you know, your two entrees. And so it's a lot of food. And that really appealed to me. I was a quantity in a quantity kind of mood. And so... I bought a lot of Chinese food <laughs> and I came home and I ate some and it did not taste good to me. It's not that it was bad Chinese food. It just the desire for the comfort of the Chinese food did not relate to my satisfaction of eating it. And I'm finding that that's the case right now with so many things, whether it's watching a television show or the food that I'm eating, I am seeking some form of comfort that feels elusive. So if you're feeling that way too, you're not alone. I'm doing my best to live my life. I went out yesterday. I had to do my grocery shopping, which is something I do every week. I like grocery shopping, so it's not hard for me. But I came home, and I think I took a two-hour nap. I was exhausted. And so during times like these, our energy runs differently. So to just please...
please be compassionate with yourself. Take good care of yourself. Drink plenty of water. Rest when you can. And I'm grateful we have each other. So I'm going to ask the angels to come in and do another special clearing of the energy field. This angels, please bring in a blessing of compassion and grace and healing and light and comfort for each one of us. Bathe us in the light that we may know God's love, that we may know the comfort of God in this moment. And take another breath in, a lovely, lovely cleansing breath in and out. And I invite you to get cozy in whatever way works best for you. And your angels are with you and they will take good care of you. And we're going to move on into our story time. And for story time... I really wanted to just share something with you that felt light and easy. I almost didn't record this episode because I wasn't sure I was up for it. And I could put a replay up, but but I really want to be here with you, I think. I don't know. I'm looking for community. I'm looking for companionship right now, and maybe you are too. So I really wanted to record this episode for you. And... And I I was thinking this morning, what could I talk about? What could we do that would be fun? And one of the places I went grocery shopping yesterday is Trader Joe's. And for those of you who live near a Trader Joe's and get to shop there, perhaps you're already smiling because many of us have a very loving relationship with Trader Joe's. If you live outside of the United States, you may have heard about this mythical place called Trader Joe's, and you've heard people talking about it on social media, and it's, I don't know, it's a delightful place to shop. I love getting to go to Trader Joe's, and so I picked up one of their frequent flyers. So every month or two months, they put out this publication that talks about all their new products. And this one is very centered on pumpkin spice. So I thought I would flip through the pages of that with you. And then I thought I would start by talking about pumpkin spice lattes. And pumpkin spice in general and pumpkin pie and pumpkins and we'll see where we go. So this will be pumpkin, pumpkin spice, fall food rambles and randoms. (laughs) So I'm going to begin by sharing with you that in addition to growing a bounty of tomatoes that have been so delicious, and sadly, our tomato season is coming to an end. My husband is an avid gardener and has grown many tomatoes, not only for me, but for our neighbors and our relatives and We have been eating tomatoes all summer long. He also planted a pumpkin patch. So his daughter had a lot of pumpkin plants and she brought them over here and Wes planted them. And I've never witnessed pumpkins growing before. There is a vitality to a pumpkin plant. I mean, they grow and they creep and they wander and they don't care about the boundaries of where you have planted them. So these pumpkin plants are wandering all over this part of the yard. And we do have several good-sized pumpkins, one that is orange. And my husband loves to go out and visit it and speak to it, because one of his favorite shows is um, The Great Pumpkin from Charlie Brown. My husband very much relates to Charlie Brown, and he likes to say that he got to have the curly red-haired girl, which is me, and so my husband is just, his whole face lights up when he talks about the pumpkins he's growing, so we do have pumpkins in our yard that my husband has grown, which is delightful, 
Another random I will share with you is that I have not always liked pumpkin pie. Growing up, we would always have it, of course, for Thanksgiving. And as a kid, it was not a flavor that I was drawn to. I liked chocolate. I liked apple pie. I liked cake. But over the years, I learned to like sort of enjoy pumpkin pie. It's not that I dislike it, but if you put a dessert buffet in front of me, I would not pick pumpkin pie. And then in the early 2000s, pumpkin pie, pumpkin spice, everything became a thing. So the aroma of pumpkin pie, spice, everything, the flavor of pumpkin really entered our collective here in the United States. I don't know how it is anywhere else in the world for months. So, so we are now in pumpkin pie spice season. So I thought perhaps I could read to you the Wikipedia page on pumpkin spice latte because it is a fairly recent invention. Well, if you're 20 years old, it's not. It's been with you your whole life because it was invented in 2003. But I'm 61 years old, so it's a relatively new invention in terms of the timeline of my life. It is older than social media, though, so there you go. But here we go. This is from the Wikipedia page shared using the Creative Commons <laughs> license. Pumpkin Spice Latte. The pumpkin spice latte is a coffee drink made with a mix of traditional fall spice flavors of cinnamon, nutmeg, and clove, steamed milk, espresso, and often sugar topped with whipped cream and pumpkin pie spice. The beverage is most commonly associated with Starbucks, which first offered the drink in the fall of 2003. The popular flavor has inspired a wide range of product variations that appear on a seasonal basis. Here's a little history. Starbucks started developing the pumpkin spice latte in January 2003, following the successful introduction of winter seasonal drinks such as the peppermint mocha and eggnog latte. And I will say the peppermint mocha was an amazing experience when it first came out. It had everything in it that I loved. Chocolate, peppermint, sugar. Like what wasn't to love about the peppermint mocha latte? But since this is the pumpkin spice episode, we will save my waxing poetic about peppermint mocha for another episode. Starbucks director of Espresso Americas what a great title. Peter Dukes said that developers realized there was something special around the pumpkin flavor, especially since there wasn't anything around pumpkin at the time. The company experimented with different combinations and ratios of pumpkin to spice, ultimately deciding on a recipe with no pumpkin in it. In the fall of 2003, the final recipe was tested in Vancouver and Washington, D.C., Sales of the drink exceeded the company's expectations. Duke said we couldn't keep up initially. We had to expedite inventory to the stores. The product went on sale in all U.S. Starbucks stores the following year. Pumpkin Spice Latte became Starbucks' most popular seasonal beverage, with more than 200 million sold between its 2003 introduction in 2015. The beverage started a trend of pumpkin spice products, such as candles and air fresheners, as well as for foods as diverse as donuts, breakfast cereals, cough drops, and pasta sauce. In 2015, Starbucks changed the recipe to include pumpkin and remove artificial flavors. The ingredients announced included a pumpkin pie flavored syrup made with sugar condensed skim milk, pumpkin puree, coloring, and preservative. 
So there you go. And I do have friends that celebrate when the pumpkin spice latte is made available each year. I think maybe I've had one once or twice. It's not quite the flavor profile that lights me up. Every time I see pumpkin spice things, I think I should get them and enjoy them. And I get them and I'm always a little disappointed. Again, when we get to peppermint mocha season, it will be an entirely different story. I also thought we could just kind of go through Google and Walmart and Amazon to get a sense on what some of the pumpkin spice flavored things are out right now. So Kellogg's Frosted Flakes has a limited edition pumpkin spice version out. There is a Munster cheese a freeze-dried limited edition. Oh, that's for pets. Okay, never mind. Because, you know, aren't our dogs and cats really craving pumpkin spice things? Like, that's just crazy to me. Swiss Miss has a pumpkin spiced hot cocoa. Nothing about that appeals to me. And then there's things like, a, like body gel. Pumpkin spice scented body gel, soap. There are cookies. Of course, a million kinds of coffee, air fresheners, cookie, uh, more cookies. The Pillsbury Grands pumpkin spice rolls, you know, that come in the tube. I don't know if you have these in other places in the world but they come in the tube and you whack it on the counter and then it explodes and you, <laughs> you put it into the oven. Werther's Original has soft pumpkin spice caramels. Premier Protein Shake has a pumpkin spice flavor. And then of course there are the pumpkin spice coffee creamers that are all available. Over on the Walmart site, we have the Oreo pumpkin spice sandwich cookies. So first off, I don't eat sugar anymore. But when I ate sugar, you could have never convinced me to use my, my sugar consumption for a pumpkin spice Oreo instead of a chocolate one. That would have never been my thing. Ghirardelli chocolate has milk chocolate pumpkin spice caramel squares. Quest protein bars has a pumpkin pie flavor. Tate's cookies. Again, don't eat sugar anymore, but I used to love Tate's cookies. They're very thin and crispy. They have pumpkin spice cookies with white chocolate chips. Now that sounds good because it has white chocolate chips in it. There is pumpkin spice instant oatmeal. There's pumpkin spice Cheerios with a $1 coupon. Even better. Give me a coupon and I'm all in. There is pumpkin spice pancake and waffle mix. Muffin mix. Again, tons of different coffee creamers and latte mixes. Oh, Pepperidge Farm has pumpkin spice Milano cookies. Again, not eating sugar. If I was going to get a package of Milano's, they would involve chocolate, for sure. Philadelphia cream cheese has pumpkin spice cream cheese. That may sound a little bit better, right? Because it could be like a pumpkin cream cheesy deliciousness on a bagel, but I would probably be more drawn to the bagel than the pumpkin cream cheese. And also, can I just say for a moment how there is a difference between pumpkin pie spice and the flavor of pumpkin. This is something that we don't often talk about, that the flavor profile of the pumpkin pie spice is the spices 
and not the flavor of pumpkin. So it can be a little confusing out there. Betty Crocker, our friend, lovely Betty Crocker, has a limited edition pumpkin spice cookie mix. Kellogg Special K has pumpkin spice cold breakfast cereal and a Glade air freshener. Because <laughs> who doesn't want your house to smell like golden pumpkin and spice? You know what I think is very interesting about air freshener is you either love them and use them or you can't stand them. I cannot stand air fresheners. I have always had a sensitivity to fragrance. And so the plug-ins and then the air freshener hanging off the, the um, rear view mirror of a car. I can't, I can't stand that stuff. I'm not judging you if you use them. I just mean I have a fragrance sensitivity. And so this idea that everything has to smell like something else confuses my brain. I want something to smell like it's supposed to smell in a good way. <laughs> so um, I am not I am not the consumer for air freshening products. In case you were thinking of sending them to me, don't. But thank you for your generous thought. I appreciate it. And in case you can't get to a local Starbucks because there is only one on every single corner of America. You can buy your Starbucks Frappuccino Pumpkin Spice Chilled Coffee Drink at the supermarket. So that's a good thing. More Febreze, more Glade, more, more Glade candles. Yeah, I also don't do well with scented candles. And it's weird, as I get older, my... My sense of smell is diminishing. In some ways, it's a good thing. A Little Debbie. Now, I'm not a Little Debbie fan. I grew up with Hostess. But then again, as a, when I got into having adult money, if I were going to use my calories and sugar consumption for a dessert, it was never going to be a hostess or something wrapped in cellophane from the convenience store. I was going to a bakery and I was going to get bakery goods. So, um, not a little Debbie consumer. All right. Well, I think we've gone through the major stuff I've seen. I'm not saying there isn't more, but that's what I was able to come up with at Walmart. But as I've already promised you, let us flip through the Trader Joe's frequent flyer together. Now, I have to give credit where credit is due. Drew Ackerman, who does the Sleep With Me podcast, which is the very first sleep podcast I ever listened to on a regular basis, used to flip through the Trader Joe's frequent flyers on his episodes. He doesn't really do it anymore, but they were my absolutely favorite episodes that he would do because I love grocery shopping and I love food. And it, I think it's fun when you talk to a friend and you say, oh my God, did you see this at Trader Joe's this week? And you have this communal experience. And so I'm sort of drawing inspiration from him to do this. I also don't know how much of this I can read to you because of copyright stuff, although I can't imagine Trader Joe's would get mad at me for giving them a free commercial, basically, for all of their stuff, but I am going to be a little careful in that I don't just completely read everything in here to you. And, um, and let's see where we go. So if you don't live in the U.S. or you don't live near a Trader Joe's, it's, it is it is just a wonderful grocery store and they have limited items they don't have everything in the world like when you go to a regular grocery store there's a huge assortment and different manufacturers have their goods on the shelf and 
most of the time everything at Trader Joe's is their house brand and they are very mindful in curating what they bring into their store. So they have unusual things, they have certain staples. I think one of the rules of being in relationship with Trader Joe's is if you have a favorite product and you have loved it for years, at some point it will go away, leaving you feeling bereft and betrayed by Trader Joe's. So many of my favorite things no longer exist there. One of my favorite things in Wes's too is they had a jumbo raisin medley. Now, you might wonder, how could you become so passionate about raisins? Well, if you ask me that question, it's because you never had the jumbo raisin medley from Trader Joe's. There were three kinds of raisins. And they were big, hence the jumbo name. They were delicious. And for years, Wes and I bought those. And, you know, a healthy marriage, you are well blended with each other. And it even worked for us in our consumption of the raisin medley because Wes liked the golden raisins and I ate the two darker ones. So whenever we got a package of our Jumbo Raisin Medley, we passed it between us on the couch, each picking out our favorite kind of raisin, never having a quarrel over who was eating too many of one or the other. Just another reason why we are so well matched. But alas, at some point in the last few years, they discontinued them. And then I had to go on the search because Trader Joe's uses co-packers. So if there's a product they bring into their store, typically that product might exist in a different form under a different label somewhere else. And you may not know this, but Fresno, California is where many raisins are grown. And I I had one bag of the Jumbo Raisin Medley left, and it said it was manufactured in Fresno. So I started searching for Jumbo Raisin Medley Fresno, and I did find a company, Sunview Marketing, that I believe was the co-packer for this Raisin Medley, and I now order from them. So a few times a year, I place an order for six canisters of their raisins. Wes insists they're still not as good, but they, they fulfill that need. And so I actually order raisins by mail. I've become that crazy. And I'm gently reminding my inner editor that this is not about raisins. This is about pumpkin spice. So, so we're going to come back to this issue, Fall 2023, of Trader Joe's Fearless Flyer. And I have to tell you something, that as I was flipping through this, I realized that I don't eat most of these foods, because they either involve sugar, which I don't eat, there's some alcohol involved, and I don't drink. So... I will share these foods with you, but it's not as if I have a lot of editorial commentary on them. So we start off with apple cider donut season, which apparently are a thing, apple cider donuts. I've never had one because again, came on the market after I cut out sugar. So people who eat them love them. I have contemplated buying them for Wes because I sometimes vicariously buy sugar things for Wes because I can't eat them. But for Wes, Wes loves a good apple fritter and he loves really good donuts. But I don't get that he would love an apple cider donut in the way he might love a fritter or a regular donut. So I haven't bought those for him. They have honey crisp apple granola. Again, love granola, but that just does not appeal to me. What does it have in it? Let's look. 
It's made with rolled oats, cane sugar, dried honey crisp apple slices, and all of the fall spices. I don't know if it's all of them, but many of them. I saw that in the store and it just didn't appeal to me. They have spiced cider. As a kid, I loved apple cider. We would go apple picking and, um, and we would get the cider and there was just something so wonderful about cold apple cider. And I know that that hot apple cider is now a thing, but I never developed a taste for that. But this is a spiced cider and it has cinnamon, allspice and cloves and a subtle hint of citrus on the finish. Again, wouldn't get it. I, I, I can't handle drinking juice. <laughs> I'm so high maintenance. I'm such an old lady. No sugar, no juice, no alcohol. Don't worry. I eat plenty of food. I am not hurting <laughs> for foods that I can eat. But just none of this here is my stuff. It's not my thing. But let's keep going because maybe it's yours. So they have pumpkins of all shapes and sizes. Now I grew up a child of the 60s and 70s and basically you had orange pumpkins. <laughs> and it was such a journey to go and pick out your pumpkin every year. But now pumpkins come in many shades and sizes and textures. We do not get pumpkins aside from the ones that Wes is growing in the backyard because in the town that I live in, more likely than not, it would get stolen, which is a whole story for another day. So Trader Joe's has 12 mini pumpkin ginger scones. When I ate sugar, I loved a good scone. That sounds lovely. And I thought these were in the bakery section, but I now see that these are in the freezer section. So 12 mini pumpkin ginger scones with crystallized ginger. They're $4.99 in the freezer section. Okay, what comes up next is a fan favorite that I have tried and it kind of fell flat for me, but you might love it. It is the butternut mac and cheese. So it's these wide New, like rigatoni noodles almost and the mac and cheese has butternut squash in it. I initially thought I would love this. I love butternut squash. I love mac and cheese and so many people love this dish. They hoard it. They buy boxes of it and fill up their freezers every season and I bought it and I was like eh. <laughs> I thought for sure this would be something I would love. So it begins, I was right, rigatoni. It begins with a Metsi, M-E-Z-Z-I, -I, I hope I'm saying that right, a Metsi rigatoni pasta. Short, thick, rigid tubes that hold sauces with gusto. And the sauce is an opulent one made with three cheeses, cheddar, gouda, and parmesan, a classic bechamel, velvety, butternut squash puree, and a sprinkling of seasonal spices, including nutmeg and sage. It's $3.79 each. I've had it. It didn't necessarily light up my world, but I know that many of you like it. They have Trader Joe's picked a peck of picante peppers. So sweet picante peppers with creamy cheese cheese filling. I'm also not a spicy food girl. It sounds like I'm so high maintenance when it comes to food and I feel like I eat just about everything, but I don't like spicy. I don't eat sugar. <laughs> it's like, what do I have? Okay. Then we have autumnal harvest pasta sauce and organic red lentil sedanini. S-E-D-A-N-I-N-I. -I. I'm not familiar with that, that phrase. So, Trader Joe's Organic Red Lentil Sedanini is a good place to start this tube-shaped gluten-free pasta. So that's good that it's gluten-free. Falls somewhere between elbows and penne shape-wise. I'm sorry, there's a bird going crazy outside. 
possessing a slightly nutty, earthy flavor while offering a toothy texture <laughs> that is sure to please any pasta fan. I'm sure that would be good if that was your thing. They have apple cinnamon buns. Sounds lovely. They also have their, their pumpkin O's, which are like their versions of Cheerios. And so they have their version of Cheerios in the pumpkin spice flavor. And these are good. I don't buy them anymore because they do have a heavy sugar content. But back in the day, Wes and I would get these and this would be our nighttime snack. So I guess, again, maybe you know the joy of having your snack be dry cereal at nighttime. <laughs> so we would pass the box of the pumpkin O's back and forth. Um, we also used to do that with the strawberry O's, which are delicious, the yogurt strawberry O's, but we don't do that anymore. But I will say two thumbs up to the pumpkin O's cereal. They are quite delicious, although I haven't had them in years. Okay, now we get to a flavor profile in their fall release that I love. Again, not having a lot of because of my low sugar consumption but it is maple flavored things. I love maple flavored stuff. So they have salted maple ice cream. It sounds so delicious. Again, not gonna have it, but if I still ate sugar, that sounds amazing. And they have mini maple marshmallows, which again would make a phenomenal Rice Krispie Treat, I can only imagine, or putting them in hot cocoa or something. Yum. Not going to have them. They also have maple flavored fudge. I will say, even when I ate sugar, fudge was too sugary for me. So who knew that that could happen, but it did. They have a maple oat beverage, which which I would imagine I would enjoy. So, so maybe I'll get a little bit of that to put into a drink of some kind. I might try that next time I'm there. They also have maple spiced nut mix. I love nuts. I don't eat them very often because they're so high in calories and, and I am a, a quantity person. So I can't just have one or two of something. I need to have a lot of them. So by the time I eat a lot of nuts, I basically have had my entire caloric consumption for the day. So I sound so high maintenance about my food. I love my food. I eat plenty of good stuff. Just there's a lot of stuff in here I don't eat. They have honey crisp apples, which are not my apples. I love envy apples. Honey crisp are a little too tart for me. They have crunchy chili onion hummus. Now the crunchy chili topping, a lot of people love. It's too spicy for me. But if I had the stomach that I had when I was in my 30s, it can handle spicy food better than I can now. This sounds amazing. So it has it's hummus. So right, we start off with chickpeas and sesame seeds and um, a dollop of crunchy chili onion. I bet that's amazing. But again, I'm not going to get it. Wes doesn't like onions, and I can't eat the chili part of it. This sounds really good. Wild mushroom and black truffle flatbread. It is in the frozen section. I might have to try this. It sounds really delicious. It would be tempting to call this a pizza. It is a sauce and a cheese atop a flat, yeasty crust after all, but it's slightly different. So it's Trader Joe's wild mushroom and black truffle flatbread with mozzarella cheese. That sounds good. It's, it's $5.49, so it is budget friendly as well. They also have mini spicy pumpkin samosas. Now, I love samosas. The idea of a pumpkin samosa sounds amazing, but I have heard that it's not just that they say spicy in the title. I have heard that these, are, that these have a high spice level. 
so I will not be able to get those, but they're supposed to be really good. Pumpkin non-dairy oat beverage. Again, I'd probably get the maple one before I got the pumpkin one. And just FYI, I have skipped over the alcohol section. I, I do not drink alcohol, and so we're just going to skip that one. We're now in the cheese section, so they've got fresh mozzarella pearls. Delightful. That just sounds delightful. Tomato and burrata raviolini. Sounds good. They have baked sheep's milk ricotta with herbs de Provence. So the whole cheese thing, amazing. But aside from a piece of cheese on a sandwich, Wes doesn't eat cheese. So if I buy cheese, you know what that means. I have to eat all of it, which is not a good idea. So my favorite way to buy cheese is at the Whole Foods in Napa. They're the only Whole Foods that does this that I've seen. They put little bits of different kinds of cheese, you know, when they're cutting the cheese and they wrap them in cellophane and put a price on it, you know, in the cheese section. Well, if there are these odds and ends, they wrap them up and sell them. So it might even be called odds and ends. So I can get like a little bit of cheese for a dollar, dollar fifty. I don't actually really care how much it costs, but it's enough for one person to have with some crackers. So every time I go up there, I gleefully go through that basket and I get a few different assortments of cheese for myself. But so anytime they wax poetic about a certain kind of cheese at Trader Joe's, I think unless I'm having company over, I'm not buying it because otherwise it is on me to finish the cheese, which is like a bag of nuts. It's not a good idea. And just as an aside, not carried at Trader Joe's, my favorite kind of cheese from the cheese section at Whole Foods, and they also have it at Berkeley Bowl, is drunken goat cheese. It is my favorite. Okay, back to Trader Joe's. They have a creamy Toscana cheese dusted with cinnamon. Sounds good. What I, what I like to do is when we're having people over, you know, for a holiday or something, I buy different kinds of cheese because then I get to eat a lot. All right, they also have pumpkin cranberry crisps, which I've never bought, but they sound delightful. They're $3.99, just in case you were wondering. We have brioche with a pumpkin twist. Love brioche. It's so good. But again, something like brioche or croissants, I'm not going to buy it from a supermarket. I am going to a bakery. If I'm going to indulge in a croissant, I am going to a bakery that makes their own. They also have pumpkin spiced Jojo's. And if you don't know what a Jojo is, it is, it is Trader Joe's version of an Oreo, of a sandwich cookie, I should say. So there is the pumpkin spiced flavor Jojo. They have maple flavored fudge. Again, wouldn't eat that even when I ate sugar. They have an eight pack of green apple sparkling water. I'm not a sparkling water person, but perhaps you are. Then they also have their fall flavors of Greek yogurt, which include honey crisp apple cinnamon yogurt and their pumpkin flavored yogurt. I don't buy my yogurt there. I don't eat yogurt very often, but I don't buy theirs for some reason. They have some herbal tea and a cinnamon roll blondie bar baking mix. I don't know. That doesn't sound good to me. Again, sugar. But even if I was eating sugar, I don't know that it sounds good to me. And then they have flowers and then they have a crossword puzzle. And on the back page, they're talking about their pumpkin bisque. So it's fun this time of year when you go into Trader Joe's because they have it all merchandised together. So you can browse through all of the fall pumpkin maple kind of products they have brought in. So there you go. A little virtual tour of Trader Joe's fall 2023 product list. So I think we did a pretty good job of sharing benign, easy, <laughs> one, con 
tent together here, right? We did a little tour down memory lane of pumpkin spice latte stuff. We talked about Trader Joe's. We talked about what kind of pumpkin spice stuff is on the market. So hopefully by now you have been able to relax and connect with the love of your angels and come into a dreamy, sweet space. So, my beautiful friend, I love you. I wish you the sweetest of dreams. I am so deeply grateful for the gift of you. And I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Thank you.